Welcome to the Big Show Newscast, your source for breaking news from the show floor and daily coverage featuring new products, events, interviews, and equipment spotlights. Brought to you by 4constructionpros.com, the number one website for construction professionals. Sponsored by Caterpillar, the next generation starts here. Good morning and welcome to the Big Show Newscast from 4constructionpros.com. I'm Roger Mann. We'll be at ConExpo ConAg 2011 each morning of the conference, sponsored by Caterpillar. The next generation starts here. With the very latest information on the many happenings from the Las Vegas Convention Center. We're going to kick off this very important week of the Big Show newscast with a look at the proposed revisions to the LEED standards. The whole mission of the U.S. Green Building Council is to um, transform the marketplace. So as the market evolves, so does the LEED rating systems. Yeah, there's actually some really very exciting and really progressive stuff that's happening with LEED. Uh, for the past 10 years that we've had LEED in the market, uh, we have, you know, put out several different versions that build on on previous versions, and 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 the the, the work that we have uh, in store for the 2012 version of the rating system is really no different. Uh, the, the the there's a couple of main pieces that we have been uh, that we've been working on. Um, the, the first piece is a, a revision to the way that we um, accept and 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 uh, engage stakeholders who have interests in uh, what is happening relative uh, to, to the lead rating system. What happens is they collect comments from really any lead stakeholder in what's called the lead forum or lead user forum and so anyone can comment on the current rating systems, the, the proposed revised changes. They also have what's called the lead pilot uh, credits and those are potential credits they'd like to see integrated potentially into the LEED rating system that current LEED project teams can use on their project. Uh, the second piece of what we've been working on uh, is, is, is making sure that we have expanded the timeline to incorporate that better feedback and that, 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 that dialogue. So we started the public comment process and the, and the formal engagement process with uh, stakeholders in the development of LEED uh, last November, uh, and so to November of 2010, um, and it will continue through November of 2012. So we have a full two years worth of development that's happening, whereas before we've really sort of tried to condense down the, the turnaround times, um, and, and that's, that, that's served certain purposes well. Uh, it hasn't always led us to a, uh, you know, to a document that was as complete as we would have liked it to be or as the market would have liked it to be. So we're hoping that 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 change is, is really um, meeting the market needs at the level of sophistication that is expected of LEED now that it's been in the market and is a, is a more mature tool. Uh, and the last piece of the, the puzzle that we've been really working on is, is a change to the way that, that we have been uh, organizing the rating system on, on two different axes. Um, the, the first axis is the credit uh, structure. Uh, we are adding uh, essentially two new categories. One category is focused on integrative process, so looking at how project teams come together to execute lead, uh, lead buildings and lead uh, projects. Um, the other credit category that we've added is a credit category that specifically focuses on performance. Um, so the performance category is really a collection of all of the existing credits in the lead rating system and some new ones. Really what they've done with this round is they've created some new lead credit categories, if you will, three of them to be uh, more specific. They've taken the technical standards and made them more rigorous and really looked at what credits were being sought after and highly utilized throughout the market and which credits were very much a challenge for the industry to use. So they've revised the technical content, they've created some new credits, they've created some prerequisites. The, probably the three biggest changes for a general contractor is going to be um, having to implement that construction indoor air quality management plan that formerly was a credit or an option 
um, during construction is now a prerequisite. They're going to have to implement a construction waste management and demolition plan, which again in the in lead 2009 was formerly a creditor and option. Um, in the new lead rating system right now, it's expected or one of the requirements of the prerequisite is that the construction team would uh, recycle at least 20% of the demolition or construction waste um, by weight or volume. Um, where before the credit was, you got one point if it was 50%. So they're mandating, if you will, a construction waste management plan as well as a construction indoor air quality management plan during construction. And then the other one is that um, they're mandating that there's a certain percentage of materials are going to be uh, have a high recycled content, where before, again, that was a credit, and now it's a prerequisite. Well, in spite of the fact that Nick here is wearing a green shirt, I want to share some uh, thoughts about green. Sustainability is what people want, and you guys are doing some very, very cool things. Sustainability is the key, Mike. We try to help our customers squeeze the most out of the resources that they have, while also not using too much of the resources, so we have some for the future yet. So. The things that Cat's doing today, uh, the things that you've done in, in recent memory, and the things you're going to be doing soon, we can hear about this every day over at Generations Park. Generations Park, exactly. Check it out. You'll be green with envy. With over 3,000 models, selecting the right pump for the job can be easy with Gorman Rupp. Visit us at booth C5011. Damn it! I hate these things! Come see the latest in distance measuring devices from Fast Measure at booth S515. Ditchwich SK650 is already designed for dozens of utility and landscaping functions, but we found room for one more, stretching your dollar. The SK650, now only $19,499. On top of the stability and traction they give you on the job, our heavy-duty tracks also give you better financial footing. Get free tracks when you buy a new Ditchwich RT12 trencher. Hurry, this is a limited time offer. If you aren't already overwhelmed with things to see and do at ConExpo ConAg 2011, here are some extra attractions that just might make your day. What happens in Vegas doesn't necessarily need to stay in Vegas. Not if you have your photo taken at the Bobcat Doosan Novelty Photo Booth. Go to booth G100 in the gold lot and your photo will be taken in front of a green screen then electronically edited so that you appear on the cover of the Work Saver or Do More magazine. With a Bobcat or Doosan loader or a Doosan generator in front of the Welcome to Las Vegas sign, or with NASCAR driver Kyle Busch, or with the Doosan generator atop the Hoover Dam. And while you're there, take a look at Doosan's new excavators on display in booth G100. If you'd rather just be a spectator, Go to the Volvo booth N1641 on Thursday at 11 a.m. That's when you'll see the three video finalists in the Volvo Construction Equipment Working Iron Challenge. The finalist videos have been chosen from public online voting prior to the trade show. Watch the videos and judge for yourself how effectively they display the elements of working hard, working smart, and working safe on job sites across the U.S. and Canada. See if your choice matches the judges. The grand prize winner will be announced live in the Volvo booth N1641 following the showing and final judging of the videos. And one lucky Con Expo 2011 attendee will win a hunting trip with American sporting legend Ted Nugent. That lucky attendee just might be you 
if you get a demo of Lyco Geosystems' latest machine control or construction positioning technology at Lyco Geosystems booth 557. After the demonstration, simply enter your name to win the hunting package for two people at Ted Nugent's private birthday celebration in December at the famous Wyo Ranch in Mountain Home, Texas. In addition to a three-day hunting trip at the nation's premier game reserve, hunters will get to share meals and spend personal time with Ted Nugent. These are just some of the added value features at Con Expo Con Ag 2011. Enjoy. To the changes coming with Green Roads Ratings, just some of the topics covered as the Big Show newscast continues from Con Expo Con Ag 2011. The Green Roads Rating System is a sustainability rating system for roadway design and construction. Uh, it's basically a collection of sustainability best practices. Right now there's 48 of them. Uh, 11 are required and the rest are what are we call voluntary credits. So the project can choose to pursue them or not and those that they achieve we total up those points and we assign a score to the project and the project can be certified if it achieves all project requirements and a minimum certification score. Because the LEED program doesn't really um, focus on pavements and transportation corridors and such from a sustainability perspective, these other types of programs have developed. So the Green Roads program originally came out of University of Washington and CH2M Hill. And what that does is it basically identifies sustainable or good or, or best practices, green practices in the road construction and uh, road construction industry and awards these practices certain levels of points. Well, a contractor that has a project certified as a green road, I, I think you know, the benefit is to actually communicate the idea that uh, you do sustainability in a meaningful way. And that communication, I think, is pretty important. And we're seeing uh, more owners and projects requiring sustainability features, whether it's in a design build, where it's overtly scored, or whether it's in what they want uh, in their design and specifications. So if you can come to the table as a contractor and say, I know how to do these things, and you can actually show that you participated in other Green Roads projects, you know, that may put you ahead of your competition. It will also benefit the contractor in that they'll probably be able to produce mixes more efficiently, they'll get the product out more efficiently, and certainly um, in a sustainable manner and in, in a less environmentally damaging manner. As far, you know, for example, this, the Green Rose rating system, I believe, I know some of the other ones do, they have uh, requirements for uh, tier three and tier four equipment. So these large kind of earth moving equipment, as you, as you ramp up in, in the control technologies on the equipment, you're gonna get more credits in the system and therefore there's gonna be less uh, environmental emissions associated with it. A project can become Green Road certified through the Green Roads website, greenroads.us. You will submit general information about the project, like owner and size. The Green Roads team then reviews the applications to decide which ones to take on for Green Roads certification. There are a number of projects that have applied the Green Roads rating system. Over the year 2010 and before, we were uh, applying an aggressive pilot project program. We had about 20 to 25 of those, depending upon how you count them. Uh, and so there were a number of those that were applying Green Roads. Um, if I want to talk about some specifics, we had a uh, really good experience with a project with the Oregon Department of Transportation uh, south of Bend, Oregon on US 97. Uh, we've also worked with the City of Bellingham for a pilot project, the City of Seattle for a pilot project. Um, Federal Lands Highway Division, they do roads for national parks, national forests, um, fish and wildlife, Bureau of Indian Affairs, we have a number of pilot projects with them as well. The Green Roads Rating System aims to benefit communities and the environment by recognizing and promoting sustainable roadway projects. But there's a financial benefit to be realized by project builders and owners as well. I really think it's important to understand that a green road costs less to the designer and there is money to be made by the contractor. And to me, that's a win-win type situation. So when you're talking about uh, solutions that might stick and work long term, if the owner can save money and the builder can make money, that's something that's going to be done. And that's where we want sustainability to be. We want it to be a win-win. We want people to save and make money. And I think it's possible. 
Well, in spite of the fact that Nick here is wearing a green shirt, I want to share some uh, thoughts about green. Sustainability is what people want, and you guys are doing some very, very cool things. Sustainability is the key, Mike. We try to help our customers squeeze the most out of the resources that they have, while also not using too much of the resources, so we have some for the future yet. So, the things that Cat's doing today, uh, the things that you've done in, in recent memory and the things you're going to be doing soon, we can hear about this every day over at Generations Park. Generations Park, exactly. Check it out. You'll be green with envy. Damn it! I hate these things! Come see the latest in distance measuring devices from Fast Measure at booth S515. The Ditchwich SK650 is already designed for dozens of utility and landscaping functions, but we found room for one more, stretching your dollar. The SK650, now only $19,499. On top of the stability and traction they give you on the job, our heavy-duty tracks also give you better financial footing. Get free tracks when you buy a new Ditchwich RT12 Trencher. Hurry, this is a limited time offer. With over 3,000 models, selecting the right pump for the job can be easy with Gorman Rupp. Visit us at booth C5011. This is the Big Show newscast from ConExpo ConAg 2011 in Las Vegas. Caterpillar CEO Doug Oberhelman was recently interviewed in regard to the company's position on sustainability, and we're pleased to present that now. Caterpillar, the next generation, starts here. Hi, I'm Larry Stewart, editor with 4constructionpros.com, and I'm very pleased to be with Chairman and CEO of Caterpillar Corporation, Doug Overhelman, to talk a little bit about uh, sustainable construction. Doug, can you give us a definition of your own, perhaps, and as well as, as well as Caterpillar's, of what sustainable construction really means? Well, I think sustainable construction, like so many things sustainable, is, is really a pretty broad and simple definition. How do we build, how do we manufacture, how do we produce, whatever it is, in a way so that whatever the resources that we have available to us on this planet are preserved for generations to come. It's a pretty simple concept, but it's, it's basically that. How do we preserve fuel? How do we preserve all the inputs that go into a construction project? How do we make sure our contractors are efficient using our equipment and all the other tools they have at their disposal? And how does all that fit to really, really use all of our resources the most efficiently we can to extend them for a very long time into the future. Well, how do you see the, uh, the industry taking shape as sustainability moves from sort of today's uh, most recent trend to a consistent way of doing business? Well, there, there is seldom a day that goes by that I talk to our customers, our employees, sometimes even our shareholders, that this subject does not come up. It's not a trend. It's not a hot button. It's the way society is really starting to operate. And it's in everything we do. And I have yet to find, a, 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 have a conversation around sustainability where there's not very good outcomes that are a result of that. It's, it's kind of amazing, really. So you see costs uh, being impacted by sustainability? Yeah, I, we, have, we have a saying around here, and I, I believe it's absolutely true at Caterpillar, that. There's not one sustainability project, one recycling project, one reuse project that's not good for sustainability and good for our shareholders. Because if you think about it, and you really do it right, somebody is saving cost, money, or resources through the process. Think about the efficiency of a, of a bulldozer. And if we can increase its efficiency a few percentage points, less fuel burn, less carbon dioxide emission, less operator wear and tear. That's saving money, but yet it's a sustainability project. 
How have uh, you personally, and Caterpillar as a corporation, come to see uh, sustainability as it's developing in the, in the, the very near future? Well, I'll talk on, on a little bit about Caterpillar first. Uh, and we've been on this sustainability path for many, many years. We just probably didn't call it that for a long time. And I would come around to diesel emissions. Uh, we have been on a, on a track for over 20 years to reduce and purify a diesel engine, which we have now done and will do as we introduce Tier 4 products in the next couple of years. I view that as a sustainable, very sustainable project. Among many others, we have a huge remanufacturing business where we'll take a water pump or a fuel pump or a tire engine, uh, maybe even certify a, and rebuild an entire tractor. Think about the impact on the planet, sustainability of that. On a personal note, it's really what I like to do and I'm restoring a, a farm that I have. It's an old coal mine and I'm trying to get to a zero erosion status on that. So I spend a lot of time about that. We put in a lot of habitat and wetlands and I thoroughly enjoy that. So it's kind of my weekend hobby. But here at Caterpillar, it's, it's really gaining momentum, I think, worldwide. And I think, in, again, in 15 or 20 years, th this concept of sustainability will be a pretty routine thing in the way we live our life. Well, what's the most compelling reason that you can give contractors to develop sustainability practices, beyond the ethical um, uh, reasons that you know, we all can understand? Well, I, I think that the, the uh, philosophical and ethical reasons will be there forever. We don't need to talk about it. Everybody likes to do good. It's simply lower cost, in my opinion. And as we together find ways to reduce their cost through use, recycling, and manufacturing, that is sustainable practices, they're going to enjoy a better and lower cost of owning and operating Caterpillar equipment than hopefully somebody else's. And that's the discussion I like to have with customers whenever I can, whether it's uh, maintaining or increasing oil lube intervals, whether it's reusing fuel pumps as I've been talking about a couple of times today, whatever it is, it really helps them lower their cost. That's how we win, that's how they win. Con Expo Con Ag 2011 has so much to offer. From scores of exhibits and demonstrations to educational seminars, it's likely to keep you pretty busy. If your interest is in construction equipment, many choices await you. From asset management and best practices seminars to a session on Thursday dealing with making the key fleet decision whether to repair, replace, rebuild, or scrap aging machines. Or if your interest is in paving, there's a Wednesday guide to full depth reclamation and another dealing with slag and its use as a dynamic construction material. Possibly your focus here at ConExpo ConAg 2011 will be on how to secure the most profitable projects in your market area. There's a seminar planned on this topic Tuesday, as well as another that deals with whether your own business practices are ruining your financial success. Paving contractors will certainly gain some new perspective on best paving practices in a seminar Tuesday, or another on Friday that will offer pointers on maximizing asphalt paving with efficient rolling patterns, or how about a guide to successful parking lot paving to be presented on Tuesday. There is a seminar slated for Thursday that centers on the success and challenges of off-road diesel emissions regulations, and Wednesday you can learn why there really is no such thing as a free lunch in a seminar on delaying capital expenditures to renew equipment fleets. These are just some of 126 educational seminars being offered at ConExpo ConAg 2011, all designed to help you and your business succeed. These sessions are presented with simultaneous Spanish translation and you can earn continuing educational credits from these meetings presented daily at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Innovation from the ground up and you can play a big part in it. Some of the many events scheduled during the 2011 convention and the Big Show newscast is pleased to keep you informed.
we had the recent opportunity to interview the Honorable Ray LaHood, the U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary. Well, obviously looking ahead with a budget plan of six years and $550 billion, 50-some billion just for, uh, just for high-speed rail, uh, the, the plan is in place, and uh, is it your position you see Congress kind of coming through with this? Well, Congress is going to pass a bill. I mean, what, obviously what we'd like is for the Congress to pass the president's vision. Right. But uh, there's 435 members in the House and 100 members in the Senate, and they have their own ideas. But their ideas are not dissimilar to what the president's vision is. And their ideas are re really the ideas that will form and put together a bill in Congress that hopefully can get to the president's desk uh, by the end of this summer so that we can really begin to send a message to America. We're going to continue to make progress on our roads and bridges and transit and other forms of transportation, that we are going to continue to make progress to put our friends and neighbors to work building the infrastructure and that small businesses will benefit from this because they'll be employing these people. Now, the president uh, was, is really positive, and as are you, behind this, this high-speed rail project. Uh, there's, there's basically been two areas of the country that have been outlined, the Northeast and Florida. Are there other areas that the, you the, would like to see this expanded yeah, into? Yeah, I mean, uh, California got the, got the most amount of high-speed rail money. They got $2.25 billion, and we've given them additional money on top of that. Because California has been working on high-speed rail for 10 years. People have passed referendums in their communities to fund high-speed rail. They have a very good plan from San Francisco all the way to San Diego. Uh, and I believe over the next 10 years you will see all new high-speed rail infrastructure built in California, built in Florida, uh, fix up what we have on the Northeast Corridor, because it's, it's a good system. Mm -hmm. It needs some fixing up a good corridor down the middle of the country from Chicago to St. Louis. And then over time, we really begin to put the pieces together and hopefully over the next 25 years, uh, knit together 80% uh, of America with high-speed inner city rail. We hope you've been provided with lots of information on sustainable construction practices. Tomorrow, we're going to focus on U.S. Highway Bill as it affects the construction industry. So be right here with us tomorrow morning for another edition of the Big Show Newscast, presented by Caterpillar. The next generation starts here. From all of us at 4constructionpros.com, have a great day at ConExpo ConAg 2011. Well, in spite of the fact that Nick here is wearing a green shirt, I want to share some uh, thoughts about green. Sustainability is what people want, and you guys are doing some very, very cool things. Sustainability is the key, Mike. We try to help our customers squeeze the most out of the resources that they have, while also not using too much of the resources, so we have some for the future yet. So, the things that Cat's doing today, uh, the things that you've done in, in recent memory and the things you're going to be doing soon, we can hear about this every day over at Generations Park. Generations Park, exactly. Check it out. You'll be green with envy.